been here before, and we talked about the message that I'm talking about today before. It started a couple of months ago, well, in October, end of October, when we closed out the year of the Tuesday morning workshops over there at Leverett Park. And the last two meetings in October, my topic was spiritual healing. And I thought that it was complete. That's the story I told you the last time I was here. So I'll stick to it. <coughs> and um, at the end of that meeting, there was a, an extended discussion, conversation, question and answer, more than usual, which let me know that um, the message of the lesson wasn't as clear as I would have liked to end it with. So the following Tuesday, my topic was spiritual healing, part two. And people seem to be more clear in understanding their message. Then the following Sunday, I was scheduled to speak here. So I took advantage of you. <laughs> and I made spiritual healing my topic on that Sunday because I wanted it to be even more clear. And so today, between then and now, Spirit has so worked through my mind and let me know that this really should be spiritual healing part four. <laughs> I hope this is the end, but we don't know, do we, Dr. Clay? We don't know, Dr. You know why? It's because Goldsmith said, Joel Goldsmith, everybody has heard of his name or know him. He talked about, he used the word pain and struggle that he goes through or he went through because he's no longer with us except that he's here with me right now. He's, he talked about the struggle that we as teachers go through in trying to receive and perceive this message that's coming through us. He said <coughs> that when he's talking and he's speaking, he's really, he, he, I'm paraphrasing what he said, is that he's seeing something that he hasn't seen, it's like for the first time, and yet it's been in front of him all this time. That's what this message is for me right now. I'm into a revelation. That's what it is. And I'm seeing something that's been in front of me all the time, but I'm seeing it differently. And, and, and more clearly than I've seen it before. And what we do is come and share it with you what's fresh man from the tree. And so, with your theme being awakening, it fits in perfectly. There's a song that you have heard before. It goes, merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. So this thing called life is a journey in awakening. Awakening from a dream. Told to you in Genesis where it says, and a deep sleep fell upon Adam. But it does not reveal anywhere from there on to the end of the Bible where Adam has awakened from the dream. Adam is us, Adam is you, and life is but a dream. And what happens is that the incidents, the situations, the experiences in life are just little realities of awakening, if we just see it as that. The message for today is a lesson that helps us to continue to awaken from the dream. So awakening is very appropriate. What happened is that um, a few days ago, when what is coming through me now fell in my mind, the topic for today is separating problem from desire. When that came through me the other day with so much more clarity, I got on the computer and I sent the group an email and it read, you're summoned to appear. 
See, we're taking a break November and December, and we don't resume till the first Tuesday in January. But I called them. I said, this is a special call. You got to come on Tuesday. That's this Tuesday. To hear more of this revelation. And I said, RSVP, and do you know they go RSVP? I'll be there. Because this thing is it is a living experience. This is what our church is all about. In case we have, do we have any first time visitors? Let me just tell you what we do. <laughs> this is this is fresh matter from heaven. And this is how we teach. We 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 this <coughs> this teaching is practical Christianity. We live up out of that New Testament and what we do is teach it in a practical way. Not just some technical, not just some talk, not some inspiration, inspirational message alone, but we present it in a way that you can use it today. So, when you walk out of here today, you should be even more and more peculiar. than you were the last time you were here. The bottom line of this message where we're going, so you can look for this and hang out with me, we're healing the consciousness of duality. We're healing the consciousness of sin. We're healing the consciousness of, 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 of believing that there is anything in this world. There is anything in your life, and there has never been anything in your life that has caused or will cause anything in your life except one thing, and that's God. Ooh. Well, now, when you hang out there a minute, you start asking, well, Lamont, what about disease? What about a name? You can give this whole lot of them, right? So we won't name one for all. <coughs> what about sickness? What about um, lack? What about limitation? What about poverty? What about racism? What about this? What about nothing? Then you tell me racism comes from God, cancer comes from God, lupus comes from God, AIDS comes from God. Well, let me ask you a question. If it doesn't come from God, where does it come from? It's something to think about. You just told me you believe that God, there's only one cause. There's only one cause, and that cause is God. Then where can anything that is to your disliking or whatever come from if it doesn't come from the one thing, from the one source? That's something to think about. Well, that's what we want to answer, and that's the answer you'll receive upon leaving here, so let's get into it. Let's start with Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Did you go to school? Is there anybody here who at least got to the seventh grade? Because you get this by that time. You get what? How to die ground sentences. How to die. You should have learned what that was for. That wasn't just to pass a test to get out of school. That was to learn how to read. So that's die ground the sentence. Whatever. So you put it in there. Things you desire. But then when you're doing it, when you're reading, if you don't understand the word, you're supposed to break out a dictionary and break it over five points. You don't know what desire means. I'll prove it to you. Because when we pray, we pray for things that we desire. What we don't realize is that we are praying for the problem and not the desire. And you get what you pray for. So our prayer continues to sustain the problem. We can, it is our prayer that sustains the problem, and that's where the, 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 the hindrance is in the healing. It's through our own prayer. Whatever things you desire when you pray, 
believe that you receive them, but the them is your problem that you're receiving because that's what you're praying for and you're not praying for the desire. So our topic is separating the problem from the desire because you shall have them. For example, well, I'll get to that later. You have to, well, this is the example. The, 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 what we have to understand is that the difference between primary and secondary causation. Didn't we talk about that last time? Huh? Yeah. Primary causation and secondary causation. What we have to understand is that those concepts are interchangeable. Sometimes the, the, the secondary can be the primary, and sometimes the primary becomes the secondary. But there is something beneath, behind, and beyond that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what spiritual healing is. That's what spiritual prayer is, is understanding. When, you, when you're coming from true spiritual healing, you transcend primary and second causation as we deal with it in the natural, in the human concept, in the intellectual thinking, in your reasoning. Medical, medicine deals with primary, secondary causation. Causation, nature, primary, secondary causation. Science, primary, secondary causation. And all of those systems, primary and secondary causation. But when you come into spiritual stuff, yes. you've got to be ready to set that aside. Amen. And understand that prime means prime. Uh -huh. Prime means one. Prime means the beginning. And it means only. So, in the, in, the, in the sense of what I am talking about, we have to remember something else that I talked to you about already, is that you cannot put old wine into new skins. So you're leaving here with the day of new skins. Put all your questions aside. Listen to what I'm saying. Catch it, and let's go from there. Your past out says spirit is the only cause. There is no power. But God, mm. there is no cause. And here's where our problem is. Listen to what I'm about to read to you, and so you can put that aside. That's old wine. There is no cause in the physical, no cause in nature, no cause in material, no cause even in mental, no cause in sin. No cause in germs, virus, disease, weather, emotions, or anything else in the universe. There's no cause in it. It's secondary cause. It has come from someplace. It is the effect. Everything that I've just named is in a, it's a symptom. Symptoms have no power to cause, but you've given it that. You've given it that. Because when you leave the doctor's office, you leave with the symptom. Diagnose, define, now this is the cause of. Am I right? You go, oh, come on. Preach. None of these things can cause anything in your life, but we have allowed it to. And our living is based on that. So as serious truth seekers in Christ, we have arrived at a peculiar place. Because I messed you up with this teaching. Made you peculiar. Some of you are probably acting strange already and people are talking about you. Going to that place. Through our commitment and dedication in the search of truth, we have evolved into a peculiar relationship with the divine over soul. So what I'm about to tell you and talk to you from here forward can only happen through a peculiar mind. Uh, second Samuel. David. Uh-huh. The soldier. Uh-huh. In battle. Going up against the Philistines. Uh-huh. And uh, he went to the valley of the giants. And uh, he took a look. He assessed the situation. So he backed up. He sat down. He said, now how are we going to conquer this? So what he did, he prayed. And he talked to God. And the Lord 
spoke to him and said, no, don't go up there, that way. Go down this way. Go around and you will hear a sound through the mulberry tree. And then I will be with you and you'll receive instruction. Then go. And he did as the Lord told him. And they killed all the Philistines. So they conquered. And then David named that place the place of breakthrough. Come on now. But see, something peculiar happened through David. Our problem in reading scriptures is that we think that that's something that just happened thousands of years ago. But that is a right now message. That's a right now message. If you have that peculiar mind like David had and see that that same thing is happening to you right now, then that sound can happen in your life right now. Because the enemies were slain. Who are the enemies? Well, the scripture tells you the enemies are of your own household. The enemies in your mind. That sound will wipe out those enemies, those enemy thoughts in your mind. If you believe it, how? Well, in your in your past out it says this is how. Be perfectly indifferent to the evidence of the senses, so that you may feel the naturalness of your desire, and your desire will be realized. What you want to do is keep two words held side by side. What are those two words? And I'm going to ask you in a minute. I want you to repeat them. I'm going to tell you now that those two words are problem and desire. What are those two words? Problem and desire. We want to learn how to separate problem from desire and stop praying from the problem, living from the problem, and never praying from the desire. And we don't want y'all making up a lot of noise up in here today. Talk about amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Waving your hand. Spinning and crying and all this stuff. This is a dignified service. <laughs> <laughs> Only I can do that. <laughs> Whoa. some hope oh you got trouble you're stuck it's a blessing how can see what you want to do now is this you want to reconcile that with your old way of thinking old wine old wine into new skins this cannot be reconciled so that's wasting time On your pass out. As the desire is realized. Now, does that say as the problem is answered? No. We got to get away from problem. Separate problem from desire. As the des what is desire? I'm going to get there. As the desire is realized, the problem is desire. You don't worry about no doggone problem. The problem will, will flee. The problem will dissolve. The problem will disappear. The problem cannot stand. The problem will go. Oh, oh, you, you, you just look around and it's gone. Not there. 
Well, guess what? It was never there in the first place. Mm -hmm. What was there is what you were seeing. Your desires, here's telling you what your desires are. We talked about what the problem was not. Your desires are the invisible realities which respond only to the commands of God. God commands the invisible to appear by claiming himself to be the thing commanded. It's not clear yet. Y'all, I'm not finished. I got a few more minutes. But this is just getting your mind ready to see what I'm talking about. The invisible reality, the desire, is not tangible. Your problem is tangible. You can feel sickness, you can feel this, you can see this, you can smell it, and that's what you pray for. But demonstration happens in your mind. Healing happens in your mind. We're going to talk about these invisible realities which respond to the commands of God. God commands the invisible to appear by claiming himself to be the thing commanded and it has to happen through your feeling. Amen. Feeling is the secret. Amen. Feeling, come on, say feeling. Say, feeling is the secret. Once more. Feeling is the secret. Once more. Be conscious of being that which you want to appear. Now this that I just read to you is from Neville, from a video by Neville. And the title of the video is I Know My Father. That's where this just came from. Be conscious of being that which you want to appear. You can't be the problem, problem, Versus desire, but you can be the desire. You, you, you can become that which you desire. Uh, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens that door, I will come in and sup with him, eat with him. That means to commune with him. But what is the I? The I is your desire. The I is the answer prayer. The I can appear disguised as. In the guise as. It said appearance. So whatever you're experiencing as a problem in your life, no matter how grave it is, or how serious it is, how big it is, or how wonderful it is, it's an appearance. It's an appearance. But that eye that comes and knocks at your door, whatever it is that you say is your prayer request now, things that you're trying to solve in your life, that's the eye. Where do you think that came from? That was God. That is God knocking at the door of your mind saying it is time for you to be healed. This is healing trying to break through. I said Baal represents the place of breakthrough. David was at the place of breakthrough. So whatever you're experiencing and whatever experience is in the future, it's your place of breakthrough is that it's time for it to express through you now and that divine intelligence will show up as the answer. Yeah. Not the problem. Amen. But through the problem. So there is nothing that you cannot heal. There is no problem that ever comes to your life that you cannot handle because if it came to you, it only comes when you're prepared to deal with it. Amen. If you couldn't handle it, it wouldn't come to you and come into your life right now. Amen. If it's there, it knows your address. It came to you for such a time as this. You don't have to deal with it. The I is the desire. It is the inner cause announcing itself and seeking a way to express itself by manifesting as, by taking the form of whatever that you're praying for or praying about. That's why I said whatsoever. It didn't start naming stuff. It said whatever, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray. When you pray, that means right now, while you're praying, believe that you receive them. Yeah. 
believe that it's already done, Sister Faith. Already done. Michelangelo saw it. He says, on your pay, on your pass out, I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set it free. So whatever it is that you're praying for, praying about, aspiring to gold or whatever, that's the angel. That's the desire in the marble. The marble is your consciousness. The marble is that everywhere present, everywhere equally present, invisible stuff that I'm immersed in. In him I live and move and have my be. In it I live and move and have my be. And I think into it and it becomes formed after the thought that I think into it according to my belief and feeling the marble. So the desire, the desire to heal the incurable, the desire to acquire a home, the desire for forgiveness in a relationship, whatsoever is the angel that is in the marble. I can't help it but bore you again to tell you about stuff that happens in my life. And the biggest thing that stands out in my life is the home that I live in. You've heard me tell it over and over and over, and I don't care if you don't want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> but when the time came for me to need a home, it was a need, not a desire. Separate the problem from the desire. So if you pray from a need, you're stuck. You need $500, $10,000, $50,000, that's a need. There's, that's legal, there's nothing wrong with that. That's legitimate. You want a whole new decoration in your house, that's, that, that's a need, that's a want. You need a job, that's a need, that's a want. It's not a desire. The desire is behind the problem, the need. Well, what was behind my need for a home was a desire for a place to take care of my mom, mm -hmm. who could no longer live alone. But I had four kids, no, three at the time. Mm -hmm. So the place that I was in was okay for us, but it wasn't for her and then us. Do you think I went looking for one? I don't do that. You need money, you need this, you need that. No, 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 no. So the house came to me. I'm on right down this address. So I write down the address. Go look at it, go look at it. It was a perfect house. Room for the kids, room for me, room for her. And more. Hey, how much money am I going to need? Who told you you needed money? Oh. I'm sitting there waiting for escrow to close. She called me, are you in the house? No. She said, go move in the house. How are you going to move in the house? I have escrow, now you can close it. I go to bed at night, telephone ring at 10 o'clock at <laughs> From the bank card. Hello, is it? Yeah. Well, I just want to know, never fill an application. So they came up, all that came up later. She said, I just want to know if we get you in this house, can you pay? I said, of course. No down payment, no nothing. I'm in the house, not even close. I go in the house, I got money put in a whole new landscape, everything. But there's something else you don't know. I gotta tell you. One leader told me, one leader done, a long time ago, because I was talking too much then. He said, maybe you shouldn't tell them, baby. She said, because see, what happens if people think you're doing all right, you're all right, then they hope it. You see, they won't give you as much. They don't tell what you want. They don't think you need. Mm. But I never listen. Mm. I can't help it. Mm. You know, you say, I can't help myself. Mm. Not only am I in the house, but even all of the payments and the expenses, even now, don't come from my money. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because God created another source even to take care of that later on. Don't come from my retirement. Don't come from my social security. Don't come from any of that. Even that. So I'm living free. Oh, God. 
Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Because I separate problem from desire. My desire was a desire for a place of peace and harmony and love to take care of my mother and the kids because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do on my end. Now, God, you take care of me. That's your business. My desire was love and something for mutual benefit for others and not selfish and not just for myself. That's what money is. Money is consciousness. Yes. yes. I was in Sacramento for Thanksgiving with the oldest of the four children, 34, 35, something like that now, has a family, doing well. He was not in need. They're expecting a baby in February. They have three or four in the house now. So when I drove up, he said, you don't have to drive. I'll send you a ticket. Why do you drive? I was like, I want to drive. I like to drive. I like to listen to my... CD, so they said, music in there. But I took Christmas gifts with me so that I wouldn't have to mail them for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I had already given them Christmas gifts, except for the kids, I'd be sending money later. But while I was sitting there, the sound of the mulberry tree, mm -hmm. y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Works from the desire. I looked around and I said, now they're having a baby in February. Christmas is coming up. You got three kids here. He just did this and this. And I'm looking and I said, when I get home, I'm going to write a check for $500 and send it back to them and say, this is for early Christmas show. Mm -hmm. Well, what you have to know, that when I tell you about the home, when I tell you about this, and when I tell you about those things that happen to me, it's because I do something. Am I right, Jimmy? Yeah. It happens because you've already done your part. Then God, you, this don't happen to you just because you say, it happened to Reverend Lamar, it happened to no, 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 no. It's consciousness. There's nothing in my consciousness that blocks my good. Where did I just tell you? I said, when I get home, that's just a few days ago. I'm going to send a check for $500 so they can have this as part for their early Christmas show. Now, what was Thanksgiving? On a Thursday? I got home on a Friday. Saturday came, and then there was Sunday. On Monday, I'm going to put this check in the mail. Three o'clock on Sunday afternoon. My doorbell rings. I go to the door. Yes. Hi. I just want to give you this as a love offering. Yes. And walked away. How much was it? Five hundred dollars. Yes, Come on. From the desire. Then have a problem. That's what the desire. Desire is of the heart. The heart's desire behind the problem. The healing is in that desire for it, for the cancer, for the AIDS, for the lupus, for the this, for the that, for the that. Don't pray on the problem. Pray on the desire. The healing is help that you want. You pray. Spirit will tell you what to say and how to believe it comes to you because of, let me go on. Amen. For example, now this is from Goldsmith. He says, for example, money is just a human concept, but it is a human concept of a divine idea. So you can put the $10,000 there as a human concept, but there's a divine idea behind it, spiritual healing. There's a spirit. What, what, what do you need it for? Get into that feeling of having that. Get into the feeling of already being in the home. Get into the feeling of already having and being where you want to go, doing what you want to do. Get behind the problem. Get behind the need. Get into the feeling of health and wholeness. Already well. Already go. Make your reservation. Do something. Do something. Already here. There you go. What would you do if you were already here? What would you do if you were already there? What would you do? Feeling is the secret. Money is just a human concept, yes. but it is a human concept of a divine idea representing what does the problem represent? What does the thing represent to you if you had it, if you were there, if you were feeling it? It is a spiritual idea which cannot come to you because it already is. It already is an embodied idea, an activity of your conscience. Goldsmith. So now, 
This is still goes to. He says, now when a problem comes to you under the guise of, now you fill in the blank. Anybody got a problem? Under the guise of that. Under the guise of any sickness. Under the guise of any need. Under the guise of any want. Under the guise of any trouble. Under the guise. You must retire within. You must cheat and realize Yes, this is an appearance that's facing me. But truth reveals that God is the only power, the only cause. Meaning, where did he come from? God. That is hard to reconcile. Whatever the problem is. But we're not dealing with God with a gray beard, blue eyes, long blonde hair, long robe, or even wool hair and bronze feet. We're dealing with God as an invisible spirit, an invisible law, a universal intelligence. So that means that anything can come out of that. Amen. Good or bad. What makes it good or bad is how you experience it. It is neutral. Therefore, God being the only cause and the only law, I, need, I have no fear. I have no fear of what mortal man, mortal mind, or what mortal condition can do to me. Dr. Robert Milliken, the scientist, was very poor. He created this affirmation and became very wealthy. Would you read it with me? I have a lavish, steady, dependable income. Consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. That's money. That's a one with an unlimited number of zeros behind it right there. If you just drill that in your consciousness and say it over and over and over, over whatever need for money that you have, this will bring it to pass. Desire. This is desire. This is from desire. Separating it from where your, your problem need that you have. You don't pray for the money. You don't pray for this. And I have a lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. You must assume that you have, you already have, and you already are. The, see, he says, I have. Not I'm going to have. I have. I have. I hear the sound from the mulberry. There is no power in effect. All power is in cause. And cause is always the invisible spirit. Now, when you face a problem with that absolute letter of truth, he says, and then make these declarations to yourself in the silence, and I'm going to read them to you, that brings us to our close, right? This is your affirmation. This is your meditation that you take with you. This is the way you practice this going forward. And what happens here is that you then leave here with a peculiar mindset that anything can happen and things happen in mysterious ways and ways that I don't understand. And then in this peculiar mindset, you don't have to put any conditions, any preconditions. You don't have to have no preparation. You know, you just need to shut up. Mm. <laughs> Chill out. I didn't know how that man was coming to my door. I wasn't expecting him. I, 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 this person wasn't even a part of my, my problem, my group, my teaching. Just showed up. No, I mean, it's not like, not like anybody I didn't know, but I'm just not kidding, telling you everything, some things you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> You have to leave here with a peculiar mind that God works in, in peculiar ways and he don't need your help Amen. and don't need your stuff. Amen. I read to you a long time ago, it says independent. Remember when I read that? Independent of any circumstances of whatever. Okay, here it is. This is a close. <coughs> yes, I know that I'm being faced with 
what appears to be a condition of disease or some other problem that has a law unto itself. But I also know the truth. Only spirit is power. Only spirit is cause. Only spirit is law. Therefore, I need not fear these other powers and causes and laws, for they are not. Only one is, and that one is God. When you know that truth, when you are still, and you, and you will find that when practicing this way, that sooner or later, see there's a sound that's going through the mulberry trees. And that sound is the voice for God that is speaking in somebody's ear, somebody's mind on your behalf, yes, or through your mind for somebody else. We're all online. WWW, <laughs> World Wide Web. We're all online. There are as many ways for you to receive your healing, your good, your answer, as there are people online. That's a lot of folks. And guess what? Your stuff is on the way. Your healing is on the way. And remember that this is an invisible network. Being invisible, it just comes through your mind and whisper and tells you what to do, what not to do, what to eat, what not to eat, what to take, what not to do, and all of a sudden you wake up, it's gone. It, it says it'll dissolve. Then the problem dissolves. The problem dissolves. The problem disappears. How does this happen? Now, there you go. None of your business. Because the book says it's a secret. He said, my ways are beyond finding out. I have ways that you know not of. So when you settle back in your peace, an instant response will come to you. It may be as a deep breath. It can come just as simple as that. Or it may be as some release that you just feel. Or it may even be as the voice for God speaking to you. But there will come an answer. And so it is. And so it is.